Hey, groups, how you living today? I hope things are going well for you as you guys get together. Uh, we're talking through Luke chapter 8 this week. Luke chapter 8 starts with the parable of the sower, the different types of soil that um, are present when the farmer goes to scatter his seed. You have the path, the footpath, you have the rocky soil, the thorns, and then you have the good soil. Um, as we looked at this, what we did is we looked at that parable by looking at the stories and the people in the stories that follow it in Luke chapter 8 this week. And really what we come down to is there's this idea of um, not being owned by the storms of this life, the cares, the riches, the pleasures, and the storms, crises of this life. Those are the thorns that choke our faith out. It's not being people who are shallow and without roots, and that's the rocky soil. And it's not being people who are hardened like the footpath and the soil doesn't even penetrate. It is really being good soil. And good soil doesn't just happen. It's prepared by the farmer. It is prepared to receive the soil. So what we understand in this is when the good soil is prepared by the farmer, it yields a harvest some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And as we look at that, we realize that's who we as the church are called to be. And I invite you to, um, as you as you dive into this discussion today, it's all about responses. Look at how the people responded to the storms of life, to the things that caused them to um, not believe what their eyes couldn't see to the hardness of heart that kept people from receiving Christ and then eventually to the perseverance of the one who um, who had the lady at the end of the story, at the end of the chapter, who had um, had persevered and reached out and touched Jesus and, and in hope and in faith that he could heal her and her life was uh, redeemed in that sense. So uh, this week, how are you responding to God? That's what we're really diving into how how is the faith god's invested uh, the the seed of faith invest in your life how is it growing and how are you being good soil all right here's the the question for our kiddos here at the foundry church for you guys to answer and take part in please don't hesitate kids be honest reach out share what you your answers to this so the groups can hear what you have to say you make such a valuable contribution to our church not by just being here but by sharing what god's taught you and what you're learning so don't be shy share what you think and uh feel free to answer these questions in your group question number one what did Jesus say happened to the seed that fell on the hard footpath? So have you ever been like super excited about something you learned from Jesus in the Bible? Like, um, th but then once it was time to do it, it wasn't as fun or it wasn't, it, you didn't want to do it? Like, have you ever been excited? You learn something from, from Jesus, and he teaches it in the scriptures, but once it's time to put it into real life action, you didn't want to? Maybe you're like me. Like, when I was little, I was a little stingy at times, but, um, like, you know, you hear something great about giving, and you're like, yes, I want to give. I want to be nice. I want to share. And then your brother comes home and eats part of the cake you won in a contest at school, and you're like, dude, you can't eat my cake, and you were no longer happy about sharing? So I need you guys to help me out a little bit. I'm going to read a story from Luke chapter 8. I think it's 22 to right around verse 24. And I want you guys to act it out for me. I want you, the kids, to be fully engaged, and I want you to do it and live it out, okay? So work with me on this um, and follow along. Are you ready? Ready to get your disciple on? Here we go. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, remember, that's you. He said this, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So the disciples got into the boat. Pretend there's a boat. Jump into it. Okay, you're in the boat. You're all there. You should, they row out. 
They set out. They got in the boat and they set out. So they're rowing against the waves. Good job. You're making great progress. As they sailed and rowed along, Jesus fell asleep. Hopefully one, nobody's asleep in the group right now. But just imagine Jesus right in the back of the boat, sleeping peacefully. And a storm came up very quickly so that the boat was being swamped with waves. So now the boat's rocking and rolling like, ah! and you're getting splashed by waves. And they were in great danger. The disciples went to the back of the boat, and they woke Jesus. Somebody wake him. And they said, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up. Jesus did. He rebuked the wind and the waves, and the storm stopped, and everything was calm. Where is your faith? He asked the disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this that when he commands the, even the wind and the water, obey him? Let me ask you a question. Why do you think the disciples were so afraid? What was the last type of soil that Jesus talked about? All right, kids, do me a favor. Make sure you pick up all your life jackets and all the stuff from when you had the boat out rowing through someone's living room. I hope you had a great time at groups tonight and um, enjoy being around your friends and your families, getting to see your parents pray together and uh, talk about the Word of God. I hope you're growing in your faith and have an awesome week at school. Even though it's super cold, I still hope it's awesome. Here's our um, questions. Question one. After the parable of the sower, Luke shares a number of stories in chapter 8. Do me a favor. Stop and in chapter 8, reread the story of the demoniac in the Gerasenes. Having read that, what stood out to you in that story? When Jesus told the, uh, the parable, he said that the seed on the rocky ground withered because there was no moisture. When he explained the parable, he said that the rocky ground represents those who hear the word, respond in joy, but have no root. So when tests come, they fall away. How does a lack of moisture and no roots fit together in this? Different from the first and the second seed, the third seed does take root. But what happens after that third seed has taken root? What is the longest you have prayed for someone or something? So the longest, like, have you prayed for years for a friend who doesn't know Christ? Or what's the longest you have persevered in prayer for something or someone? Perseverance is this. Perseverance is, is um, persistence in doing something when you meet difficulty or have lack of success in your efforts. Why do you think it matters that we as Christians persevere? I would like for you to take a minute and read the story of the sick woman in Luke chapter 8. I believe it starts in 43, ends at uh, verse 48. Take a minute, read that, and then afterwards I have a question. In this day, 
in her day and age, this woman, uh, the cost of her illness was immeasurable. She would have been unclean for 12 years. She would have been isolated. She would have felt ashamed and, and excluded from everything. She had spent all her money on painful remedies that didn't work. You can see that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 26. According to what she had known, if she touched Jesus, he would be unclean. Why do you think she dared reach out for him? All right, so um, one of the questions that came to us was, um, how can we know about opportunities to help or get involved other than The Loop or Facebook? It's a great question. Here's what we know. Groups will always be given the first um, uh, crack at these things. They get the first chance at it. For example, like those of you who baked cookies for the Christmas party and those boxes or your invitation to help with, like, Feed My Starving Children, um, That is one main way. Groups, we try to communicate with you and get you guys invested and involved, giving you the first opportunity because you're doing what we value doing the most. It's the weekly rhythm. Worship, being in devotions, and being in groups. When you're involved in that, you get the first crack at it. So um, we will keep feeding those um, to you. Uh, One of the ways you can do it, you can get more involved, is if you want to reach out to us, if you have a specific heart to do something, email us, info at foundrychurch.net, and just say, hey, I have a heart to do this. We will make sure it gets into the right right hands and get you involved as quickly as we possibly can. So we are getting ready to start our 18 to 25-year-old worship service, a worship service where people who, have, uh, who are in that age range have an opportunity to connect with one another uh, beyond just the big room on Sunday mornings. So what we would like to do is um, invite you as groups. As we get ready to launch this, there's some things we need because by and large, the 18 to 25 year old age range, they eat cafeteria style, right? They're, they're always getting food from a line or things like that. They, they don't get the, the family meals that we often take for granted. So one of the things we're going to be doing is every week they're gathering. The name of this service is called Tuesdays at the Table because the this age group that's putting it together wants to have worship, the teaching, and then go straight into small groups. But what we'd like to do is provide a family-style meal on the tables in that room so that they can eat together and do groups content right there. So they get to eat around a table and have those conversations. I think I, I know listening to them, a lot of them miss that element of their life before they were in college or grew up and moved out. So we are asking if you would be interested in helping to provide a family style meal once a month to one of the tables. Or um, if you're like, hey, we will cook for the whole shebang once a month. Whatever you want to do, if you're interested and willing to help with that, we would love to hear from you. Info at foundrychurch.net, or you can go ahead and email us, erica.folkers at foundrychurch.net, and we will get you into the loop, uh, not into the actual loop, but get you into the, to the flow of how we're going to go ahead and um, not only feed these students, but give them a life-giving experience around a table, which they value so much. I think one of the things that really kind of touched my heart in, in preparing this, this group was we met with them and we're starting to dream about it, um, this organic group of kids kind of came up and just said, we would really like to start something. And they didn't know we, were, we had a heart to do that. And when we talked to them, one, one of the college students said, it's why I love when a family might invite me over for dinner after church on Sunday. I miss sitting around a dinner table and laughing. And it's just kind of like, oh, we take it for granted so much. So here at the Foundry, we value the table, right? It's one of our values, and we're making room for them. And we would love if you could help to supplement their diet with something other than ramen noodles. (laughs) I think they would be thrilled. So uh, they love home-cooked meals. They really miss them. And we would love for you to take part. Email us, info or at erica.folkers at foundrychurch.net. We'd love to get you being part of how we're taking care of this incredibly important age range where a lot of students drift. We've got some students trying to give them a connection point, students and young adults trying to give a connection point, and we want to lean in on that. Join us if you're able. Ooh, I super like that one. Ooh, oh. Oh. 
That was horrible. That was almost as bad as the one. Did you hear your voice crack? That was so you're like, one. Oh, your voice cracked. <laughs> Did you hear that? You're like, three, two, one. Oh. All right, should I clap and just keep going? Yeah.